about 230,000 hectares of mangrove forest remaining, Cameroon has the largest mangrove uh, forest cover in the whole of Central Africa and is the sixth uh, position in the entire continent. Now, mangroves uh, play an indispensable role in the fight against climate change, absorbing five times the amount of carbon as compared to other terrestrial uh, forests. They act as a barrier between land and sea and are a hub for fish and other aquatic alive uh, reproduction. Unfortunately, though, in the last decades, mangroves have come under attack, witnessing an, an unexplainable rate in the level of uh, depletion. What can be done to reverse the strain? You're watching Planet Rise on Canada English. When we come back, we we'll meet our guests. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Our guest in today's edition of the program is an avid a researcher with decades of experience in the field of mangroves and wetlands conservation. He's equally the national coordinator of the Cameron Wildlife Conservation Society and is equally the national coordinator of uh, the Cameron Mangrove and Wetland Conservation Network, Dr. Godong Adjonina. Thank you so much for talking to us. It's your first time coming on the show. I'm happy to have you here, finally. Yes, I'm happy also to meet you. Now, in the last uh, 30 years, as in the last three decades, Cameroon is said to have lost uh, about 50% of its uh, original mangroves area. Now, that is according to findings by your organization, of course, in collaboration with partners. My question is, what accounts for this rapid loss the size of the mangrove? Yeah, um, mangrove in Cameroon, particularly in Africa and at large, have been suffering this loss because of uh, factors which I'm going to explain. First, the conversion and the deforestation of mangrove being caused by uh, urbanization, converting of mangrove lands to land, man, land so lands, that, lands that are not uh, mangrove areas. Right? You say uh, infrastructure development, organization, all that goes. Like, can you give an uh, example of that? Um, uh, I can. In Douala, you see, the, the Douala city was not 50 years at best. You see, buildings occupied the, 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 the roads, and in fact, it has shifted the regional mangrove area very far. And that is a cause. Secondly, we have mangrove degradation or fragmentation of mangrove habitats because of uh, uh, use pressures. The use pressures uh, for these resources, or natural resources that are surrounded uh, that are associated with mangrove. I will start with wood. You know, wood is uh, most of the wood in uh, cities or in rural areas where wood uh, comes from the mangrove areas where the mangroves are. And uh, in Douala, you see most of the uh, boulangeries or bakeries, okay. uh, roasting areas, and all that you see. Mangrove, which is all used in all those activities. Especially uh, the production of charcoal. Yeah, because the production of charcoal, right? Yeah. The wood produces high quality charcoal. And uh, the wood is uh, extremely good in the sense a good wood properties, especially when it is wet, it can burn. So there's no use going for other species that will need you to dry them before you use. So you can use them directly. They are just like you collect those. So we also have resources around mangroves like the sun. If you look around the water, the sun, the, ma the, the, the sun around mangroves is used in building. Imagine what sun does. The whole 
urban landscaping, rural landscaping, such as building, construction, and so on. That amount of sand, if we move right to Tiko or what, you see that is well extracted from the land there. So, uh, again, uh, we see another uh, factor connected to the wood use is the, the smoking of fish. Okay. You imagine a janga or whatever fish that gets into your table or my own table. Most of it is smoked yes. using. For the same reason, the, when we smoke, when they smoke a mango root, it has a good correlation. The ground attracted correlation uh, and even test compared to other species of wood, uh, wood that you, when they smoke, it's black or whatever. And um, that, uh, you don't need to process the wood. The wood, you can use it just as it is. As it is. As you cut it, use it. So now, would, would you see the pressure? The pressure, yeah. yes, is coming from every yeah. angle. I, mean, I will not. Woman, I want. Woman, I want to forget the pollution pressure. Okay. Of last sisters, land-based pollution, and industrial pollution. Pollution coming from the structured industries and all that come to add. Like an industrial hub, like yeah, the town of Douala. Yeah, come to add to the pollution of mangrove. Yeah. Now, I mean, with this rapid loss in the size of uh, mangroves in uh, Cameroon, what is the implication? I mean, how worried should we be? Uh, the implication of uh, this loss, we already said, you already mentioned that, uh, so much area has been lost for uh, a year, most 3,000 hectares lost okay. annually. And the implication is we lost all the functions and products that these mangroves are giving us. First, uh, the protection for function. We look at the cost of protection for uh, function and the infrastructure. Mangrove, it is thanks to mangrove that all uh, uh, waves and uh, dangerous waves and tsunamis are blocked or can be abated. You can see what happened in Asia, where tsunami uh, uh, got a lot of, lot of, it caused a lot of damage. Uh, to soil lines and even people. So when you have mangroves, it will protect us against that. So natural infection. Then um, it is also, there are bow filters, actually, or ecological filters. Okay. Filter pollution, the filter the air. And they are very important in climate change. We mentioned uh, five times. Okay. Of, uh, carbon is sequestrated in mangroves than in the inland in tropical inland forest. forest. So, uh, mangroves play a very, very good role. So what you're saying is that when we lose this forest, this other function that they would have brought and they would have no longer existing. Yeah, no longer existing. That uh, the livelihood security and ecological security of coastal people or people surrounding them would be put at risk. Now, let me just find out. I mean, that is the from, the, from my findings and from some of the work you have equally done is divided into three major blocks. We have uh, the Rio de Rio uh, block, we have the Cameroon Estuary uh, block, and equally we have the Tem Estuary. Now, can you tell us more about this uh, block, especially we, uh, with regards to the composition of the block surface area, and maybe more interestingly, the block that faces the highest threat of depletion? You know, mangroves are natural systems, uh, respecting natural boundaries. So mangroves, uh, in Cameroon, we have, as you said, three blocks. We have the red array, red array begins from Akwaife, which is contiguous with the mangroves of, uh, uh, of uh, Niger Delta, okay. which are almost the first in Africa, Niger Delta and the mangroves. So from red array, these mangroves are certainly intact very tall and giant and uh, subjecting little pressure. And um, generally, uh, uh, generally, this mango, the composition is almost the same. Even when you want to move to the Cameroon estuary, which we now... You are talking about the composition that yeah, comes from the... Yeah, yeah I wanted to talk that last so okay, that fine. you appreciate <laughs> okay, exactly fine. how, because it's more or less Homogeneous. Okay. Yeah. So once you move from Roy de Ray estuary that ends at uh, Edinao, okay. then there's a gap called the Cameroon Mountain Gap. Okay. Yeah, there are no mangroves. It's close by rocky coast. Then we start from Bindia. 
Bimbia used to be part of Red River, but uh, for ecological reasons, we joined it to the Cameroon Estuary. That starts from Bimbia, you know, Bimbia uh, Limbe tree. All the way through Tico, uh, Mongo Estuary, Wuri Estuary, Senegal Estuary, to Nyong Estuary, okay. we call them Cameroon Estuary. Mangroves. These mangroves, uh, some are intact, some are facing a lot of pressure because of the demographic, the, 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 the demographic uh, uh, composition. composition. Mm -hmm. The Wala alone is it contains more than two million. Is people. that two million people you know, actually? Yes. You, you know the pressure that we have on this mango compared to the red wave. Then uh, you have uh, and uh, then the ten. Start from the young estuary, passes through Lokonji in Kribi, okay. right to ten. Where contiguous with the mangroves of uh, Ruin Ten of uh, Bata in uh, Kutora Guinea. So those ones are also relatively intact. But uh, I come back to the question of composition. Okay. The mangroves are basically composed of six species. Six species. You have uh, the red mangrove species, which you all will usually see composed more than 90% of the mangroves. It's red. You see the wood is red, everything you have call it red mango, rhizophoria, okay. which has six species. You need the taller one, the smaller, the shorter one, and uh, mango, and in between the intermediate one, I will see that. And then um, the white mango, which consists uh, less than six, uh, five percent, uh, is uh, Vicina, the product of Vicina. Then uh, but you also this, have, okay. yeah, you also have little dotted. Other species, which no, are but all these so mangroves, I understand, they have similar functions. Yeah, they have similar they don't functions. They are playing different mm -hmm. functions. Okay, because of maybe different features. Different features okay, we are going to continue discussing, but at this particular uh, point in time, I would like to invite our beloved uh, viewers to follow a report that was done on mangroves and the threats they are facing and what could be done to reverse this trend. Take a watch. Mangroves are shrubs and tree species that live along shores, rivers and estuaries in the tropics and subtropics. They are remarkably tough and live in water up to 100 times saltier than most other plants can tolerate. Cameroon, mangroves are divided into three major blocks, notably the Rio de Rio block, which is home to 50% of Cameroon's mangroves. It spreads across the Indian Division, Idenau, and the Bakasi area. The Cameroon Extrary block is another group of the mangrove forest. It hosts 45% of Cameroon's mangroves and spreads across Limbe 3, Tiko, Mungo, Uvuri, and the Nyong River. The third block is an Them Extrary, which spreads across Nyong, Campo, passing through Kribi. Mangroves are of tremendous importance to the ecosystem. They have the capacity to take far more carbon out of the atmosphere than terrestrial forests. A patch of mangroves can absorb as much as 10 times the carbon of a similarly sized patch of terrestrial forest. Thus, helping the fight against climate change. Mangroves act as a barrier between land and sea, support fishery and aquatic activities, protect the coastal area against strong winds and tsunami and coastal erosion. Despite this importance, the mangrove ecosystem in Cameroon is continuously under threat. According to figures from the Cameroon Wildlife Conservation Society, the CWCS, Cameroon's mangrove population stands at about 230,000 hectares. Unfortunately though, 
50% of this population has already been lost in the last 15 years. Mangroves that could protect Cameroon from rising sea levels may be subjected to more pressure than they can bear. People migrating to the country's southwestern coast clear trees for habitation. Mangroves are equally exploited wantonly for the production of premium charcoal, which is in high demand. In Africa, as with many parts of the world, efforts to adapt and mitigate the effects of climate change have focused largely on slowing deforestation in tropical and inland forests. Experts say it is time the world pays similar attention to the water parts and water forests. If this is done, the pressure on mango forests will most certainly decrease. Welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We're just watching that uh, report on a mangrove. And Dr. Gordon, I'd just like to turn to you. I mean, after watching that report, which we understood some of the mostly economic or rather the environmental benefits of uh, a mangrove, I would like you to highlight on other benefits such as social and economic benefits and come to a question that I've always been wanting to ask. Why is it that attention for some time we haven't had much attention paid to mangroves? As, uh, as compared to inland uh, forests where the fight against deforestation has been on for so many decades. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, talking about the, the importance of mangroves starting the community, they are linked to their resources. You know, the wood and no wood product. They okay. will get a sustained value. The wood product you see the wood that is used for several purposes for so wood a construction wood for habitation and so on. Then we have the non-wood products, uh, the fishes, the sand, all that, that support the economy and uh, the the sho socially uh, we talk about the the, the spiritual attachment in uh, this ecosystem and even wetlands ecosystem where uh, rights uh, uh, exercise okay. during festivals. We have recreational benefits for people who want them. Uh, benef educational benefits uh, when kids and middle schools go take, for research, uh, yeah, for, go for research and excursions. And so, so you see, mangrove can socially can stabilize social structures and all that. Now, on the 11th of October 2018, the government of Cameroon announced the creation of its first marine terrestrial national park, that's the Douala Idea National Park. And therefore, that of course has been possible thanks to uh, the research, several years of research conducted by your organization, the Cameroon Wildlife Conservation Society, of course, in collaboration with your partners. Tell us how significant this park, or rather, this decision of the government is, and how did the decision make it? Uh, I feel very satisfied. I feel very satisfied with the level of recognition of the government, of activities, of activities of partners. Uh, almost more than 15 years of research, consultation with the population, working with the population to get this park. Well, what the decision uh, uh, basically transforms the whole wildlife reserve, which uh, is included by uh, in, uh, four largest rivers in Cameroon, you know, the Nyon, the Guri, and uh, uh, Sanaga, and the Dibamba estuary. Okay. You know, just trapped uh, by the estuaries, and the population of more than 40 villages inside, which existed. Uh, several years before the old reserve was created in 1932 as other areas in Cameroon. Okay. But then it subjected over the years pressures and conflicts, uh, land pressure, use of resources and so on. And even the government had some investment that was going on in the reserve as schools and all that. And then with the major project that is in, in pipeline, you see, all this compromise, conservation, 
Airport. 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 Compatible with conservation effort. Conscious of that, conscious of the research effort, we partner, even the government partner involved in that. Uh, there was need to seed 30% of encroach area, especially by the population. And, uh, and then regain it somewhere. That is why they have had been an extension of the original 50 percent of the area into the sea. Okay. And gaining more mango, where we have a total of 40,000 mango okay. in another division which has been added, which is the uh, Desande subdivision. It's almost relatively natural mango. So with that decision, uh, to compensate the population from the pressure and even liberate them. And then uh, now, uh, regain environment, um, more habitats. I mean, original, I mean, marine habitat, which I mean, marine park, which we don't have, and mangrove park. My question is, how does practically, how does this decision uh, by the government help to, you know, protect a mango? Practically speaking, how will it help to curb the exploitation of mango, which is at a very high level right now? Yeah, you see, uh, uh, that decision puts more than 20% the total mango should come out with protection. And protection that is free from human impact. Since most of the land has been reconciled in the in the new act. So fifty percent of mangoes will mean sure, um, um, uh, and then uh, and uh, uh, more than fifty percent of uh, the uh, sea uh, the sea landscape that has been gained means that the interface between mango and ma 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 mangrove marine interface will reinforce. And uh, you see, uh, mangrove will play all the roles of water water fully. So I think uh, that is why the decision reconciles environmental and developmental. And developmental. Just yes. to find out for me, because you know, sometimes uh, national parks are created that they are often encroached into. Are there going to be like patrols like we have for other parks where from time to time, eco guards, I don't know how you're going to call guards of a marine, uh, of marine, a protected area. Are there going to be patrols that are going to make sure that people don't encroach into these new protected yeah. areas? Uh, all parks have a uh, park management administration that acts based on uh, the management plan. Okay. Each park, each park, each protected area has a management plan. The management plan is just a document that says exactly how the park or the area is going to be managed. And it's not the just a document, it's just the process that produces that document is very important. It has to be the consultation at the day, right up and the various stakeholders involved you need to come out with that management plan so that it will be respected. In the management plan you have what we call a, a kind of zonation. You zone the areas, areas of mangrove areas of uh, uh, farmland and so on, all the habitat zones that are found within uh, the park. And then there are the rules that are assigned in this uh, various zone. So people are bound now to respect it. But it's not just rules that just dropped from um, the heaven or from earth to the people, but they took part in the process and they know exactly what they should do, the do's and the don'ts okay. of the management plan. So, there is a park enforcement uh, team, okay. the, the guards and so on. Uh, they do regular patrols to make sure that these areas are, and the park area is respected. Even the marine area, the first time we're having a marine, marine national, national park. park. And marine national parks are different from terrestrial national parks in the, in the fact that marine national parks are mostly protecting the, the they are for social economic goals, protecting uh, the fisheries, the local fishing for because of uh, from uh, from encroachment okay. by uh, large shipping shipping uh, boats or uh, yeah uh, plant, uh, commercial heavy, heavy fishing, uh, the fishing commercial okay. activities. So they are really for the people. Okay, and, uh, as in their, in their design. Now, uh, your organization is planning a trip to Mwanko. I mean, Mwanko is an area that equally has a large amount of mangroves. What is this activity all about? 
Uh, uh, you know my organization has uh, the headquarters in Mark. That's the only organization that has the headquarters in the field. Okay, and yeah. then the liaison office, we are only an order. So the issue there is that since because of uh, pressures in, uh, on mango ecosystem, and, uh, we have, uh, uh, they have come up with the government administration on the ways of contenting this desert through uh, the use of improved smooth ovens. Okay. The improved smooth ovens uh, put in place with this type of that will help reduce the amount, the amount of mango that could have been used by, by 60 percent, 40, 40 oh, to 60 percent. Wow. Wow, Meaning really that uh, instead of using uh, 10 pieces of wood, you can just use four and you achieve the same goal. So it's a clean energy. So our trip in Mwanko is just to, I mean, I mean it, uh, it's just to, send, uh, uh, to present this pilot oven like a constructive with the women, women sector. As a center, a promotion center for the conservation and the, and, and the administration, with all that are partners. So we just going to show this showcase mm. that to the population so that they can um, replicate uh, in their individual uh, smoking activities. We are yeah, wrapping up with the program, but just one word to those that are watching what can be their own contribution to preserve mango? Uh, Maybe you want to look at the camera. Yes. I am inviting everybody that mangoes are linked to everybody, whether you are anywhere, contribute to plant mango. Who contribute an effort to plant, conserve mango, or even talking about mango so that uh, people uh, it will play the role, the benefits that we have for our collective livelihood and ecological security. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank Gordon, for you. coming on Planet Rise. It's really been a fruitful discussion, and I'm sure those who are watching at home must have learned a thing or two. We yeah. want to really thank you so much for taking the time to watch your favorite program, Planet Rise, on Canal de English. But don't go anywhere because programs continue on your favorite TV, Canal de English. But for now, goodbye and God bless.